This video is a continuation of the Introduction to Modeling series. In this video, we're going to be modeling a chain. This is much the same as, as what we did in the last video. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open up the file, so the sample object start scene. And again, this is a link from the first video. You can grab these if you want to work along, uh, use these reference images and the, the shaders that I'm going to show here. So we're going to be modeling this uh, chain, but I want to do it fairly accurately. So instead of just using an external image out here, I want to go ahead and pop that directly into Maya. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open Maya up here. And then uh, I don't want to add an image plane to the perspective. I want to add that to one of my orthographic views. So I'm going to tap the space bar to come out to the for view. And then I'm going to go to the front view. You can see the, the different views are indicated here. Go to the front view, tap the space bar. And say, now that maximizes my front view. Come up here. This is the import image plane. Click that. And then in reference images, I'm going to choose this one, the chain. All right, so now I have that image directly in Maya, and I can use that uh, for, for modeling. So a couple of things that uh, you generally need to do whenever you bring in an image. I'm going to just tap the space bar again to come back out to four view here. So what you have is the plane that intersects the object at the origin. So let's say, for instance, I added something, a cube here. Then half the cube is going to be visible in front of the plane, and half of it is going to be obscured by the plane. Um, so first thing I recommend is you grab the image plane and you move it back. And so that means opposite the direction of the arrow in most cases. So if, I want, if I'm looking at this from the front, I want to push this behind my object. That means move it back on Z. And if I was looking at it from the side, I would move it back along X um, from the default side anyways. Okay, so now with that back out of the way, it's not going to interfere with my view of the object itself. However, it's not very useful to me to have this view here. I really only want to see it over here in my orthographic view. So you can uh, make that adjustment in the attribute editor over here. There's the attribute editor. If you don't see it over here, it's this one up here. So you can just click that and then we'll add it to the side. All right. And so basically, we want to set display to looking through camera. And that means we're only going to see that image down here. This is the only place it really matters anyways. Um, and so that's what I want my image plane to look like. There's one further thing that you can do, um, which is not always needed, but sometimes can be useful. Um, let me give you an example. I'm just going to duplicate this by, oops, not that, duplicate this by per pressing Control D. And I'm going to move this up here and select both of them. You can see this one is selected, but you can't see this one is selected, but it is. Um, it's because the, the highlight um, color for anything uh, beyond the first or the last selected rather is going to be white. And because this image is white, it's really difficult to see. So one thing you can do is select the uh, image plane and then just drop your color gain down just a little bit and that will allow you then to see the white um, highlight around the edge. And you can bring that down you know, to whatever you feel like is necessary. It's really easy to see now and so that's fine. Not always needed but something good to know about. Okay, so I'm going to dump those and then we're going to get started. So what primitive does it look like we're going to use here? So this is very similar to a torus shape. So this is going to be our, our go-to here. And so the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have um, the axis set properly. So I'm just going to double click on the torus to bring up those options. I do in fact want this to be facing down Z. So I'm going to go ahead and have that. And then I want it to be um, have enough resolution that it looks good um, from relatively close. So I'm going to go ahead and up my axis divisions to probably 36. And the height divisions are probably going to be fine at 20. I'm really not sure what the radius uh, or the section radius need to be. So I'm just going to leave those at default and we'll see what we get. Create. Actually, those are not the defaults. So I'm going to undo that so you can see what the defaults actually are. Reset there. Okay, so here are the defaults. So I'd already made some settings changes on a previous thing. So I'm just going to set this back to Z and set my axis divisions back to 36. And now this should be exactly what you see on your end. Okay, so it's quite a bit fatter um, than we uh, want it to be, but um, that's uh, easy enough to change interactively through the channel box. So click the channel box over here. Again, if you don't see it on the side, it's this one right here. And you can choose either one of those places to activate that and then click on Polytorus. And now I can interactively change all of these elements. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this section radius down, sort of try to find the, about the right thickness. 
I'm going to reduce the radius, and, and I am holding control. So when you do virtual sliders, you select the name of the channel, and then you hold middle click and drag. And I hold control, middle click and drag in order to get that a little bit more accurate. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and move this over. It's actually much better practice. I might as well go ahead and show you the, the right way, even though this would work fine in this particular case. Moving the object is fine in this case. It's a much better idea to get in the habit of moving your image and leaving your object at the origin. Typically, you want your object to be sitting at 0, 0, 0 here. It just helps, um, especially if you're going to do anything more complex um, with radial um, distribution of geometry, mirroring, all sorts of stuff. So generally best idea to leave your object at the origin if you can and adjust your image plane. So I'll just sort of pull this over where this is lining up. I'm going to tap the 4 key. That'll give me wireframe. And then I'm just going to zoom in by pressing Alt and then right click and drag. So what I'm going to try to do here is basically just get this lined up where it's centered. That's very close to centered. And I can see that I need to bring the overall radius down for this. So again, I can select my torus, select the input, and then grab my radius, and then I'm going to hold control, middle click and drag to reduce that down. And that looks accurate, fairly accurate. The section radius is incorrect. You can see that it ends way in here and it should be ending out here. So the radius is about right, but the section radius is wrong. These two play off each other, and so you, there's a little bit of back and forth to get this really dialed in uh, to the right thing, but something like that is getting pretty close. So I'll just up my radius a tiny bit more. That looks really close. So I'll just say that that is close enough uh, for me on this. And I've got the basic radius of the torus set, but I don't have this shape. So you might initially think, okay, I could just scale that out. But you'll see that that's not gonna work. You end up with thinner and thicker areas, and it's just generally not the shape of a chain. So what you actually want to do is move the components, some of the components of this, down this way. And so what I could do is right click, grab vertex. This would work in edge or face mode, but I'm just going to use vertex for now. And then click and drag a marquee to make that selection. And I'm going to press W for the move tool, or come over here and grab the move tool. And then just drag to the right to create that shape. Now, that basically looks correct in this case, but it's actually not. It's a subtle thing, but it's an important thing. So this is basically the correct shape, but I want to show you what the problem is here. I'm just going to press undo, control Z. I'm going to press F8 to get to object mode. I have to tap it twice in this case. So F8 just toggles back and forth between component mode and the last used component mode and then object mode. So it's a very useful one to know about. F9, incidentally, is uh, vertices, F10 is edges, F11 is faces. So uh, they just sort of go up um, in size along those function keys. So F8, again, back to the object. I'm going to click poly torus, and over here I'm going to change my uh, subdivisions on axis. I'll just make that 8 or so, because that makes it very clear, the problem. So now if I do the same thing, I right click, I grab the, the vertices, and I drag them down to the right. Now you can see very clearly this is not the right shape right because this angle right here is not a flat angle as it should be like this it's it's sloping in we end up with this sort of tapered shape and that is not what we want and so this just magnifies the problem but that same problem exists here on this one so even though it's not as easy to see because it's higher resolution that same problem still exists so basically the solution to this is you want to make this section right here flat. So one way to do that is just rotate this object. Now, I did this uh, the lazy person way. I made my subdivisions on axis 36. And that means that every one of these edges that you see going around represents 10 degrees, right? Because 360 total. And we have 36. So I want to just ro rotate this thing back halfway. And so that means it's a 5 degree rotation. Um, and so I want to come in here onto the rotate Z, and you can see that I see the Y axis and my X axis, which means I'm looking down the Z. You can also always look here as well to get a sense of that. So I want to rotate Z, just set that to 5, and that'll set me up where now, zoom in here so you can really see it, perfectly flat along the top, and now it's going to represent um, this chain shape exactly the way that we want. So I'm going to right click, choose vertex. And I already have that selection. Actually, the selection is very slightly wrong. 
So I'm going to go ahead and drag that, change the selection just a little bit. And one thing you're going to want to make sure in this case is you're set to world. If, if you're set to object mode, you'll see the arrow will drag up and everything will sort of skew off because this whole object has now been rotated five degrees. You want to make sure you're set to world as your axis. And then when you drag this over this way, you basically get the chain link without any issues. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop out to um, my perspective. I should not have done that. Basically, the, what I do, the way I navigate Windows, is press and hold the space bar, click on the word Maya, and then navigate to whichever um, one of the views you want. The problem with that, the reason I should have shown it here, is now you can see that I've actually um, made this where these are doubled up views. And uh, I don't want that to happen to people early on here. So if you ever have that, just press and hold the space bar, click on the word Maya, and then select back to the view that you wanted. So in this case, front view. And now you have all of your views uh, restored. So I just should have tapped the space bar and then come back up here to this perspective view to show you this. All right, so that's my chain link. It basically looks good. I'm going to right click on it and assign an existing material. Um, again, it looks like it's almost going off, but not quite. In this case, I'm going to add the, sh the shiny silver material. All right, and so now you'll see that this will have a little bit of uh, reflection to it, make it look a little bit nicer. And now I want to duplicate this out to make the chain link. So what I can do here is I can duplicate it just like this and just use my eyeballs and line it up, and that's going to be fine. Another way that typically is a little bit easier is to adjust this pivot point. So if I hold the D key, that puts me in pivot um, manipulator mode, and then I can add V. So I'm now holding D and V, and you can see when I press V, this changes from a square to a circle, and also this turns on and off. So that's V, so this is snap to vert. I'm just going to grab the X um, translate control, and I drag that back to here, and it will automatically snap to whatever I put the cursor over. So this is an interesting thing about the way this works in Maya. If I put the cursor up here, it's going to snap to whatever that location is on X. So your cursor doesn't have to, have to be um, where the pivot point actually is. In this case, it's going to be, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, so now I've got that set up. Now to create a duplicate, I press Control D, and now I'm going to hold V, and I'm going to just grab the X manipulator, now I'm not holding D and V, I'm just holding V. I want to snap to verts. I don't want to adjust the pivot point. My pivot point's where I want it, so I'm just going to snap this forward until that comes into contact over here. And now I know that I've got those aligned properly. I can hold, or just tap E. Um, and this is this has a little bit of the issue. It's difficult to tell right now, but this is using the object's rotation. I want to use the world uh, axis still. So you can see if I rotate this, it's actually going to come off axis just a little bit. It's not a huge deal, but it's a little bit. You can see that that, is, that goes onto this up angle. So what I want to do is you can double click here and change your axis orientation to world. And now this is going to do exactly what I want it to do, and that thing's going to stay nice and flat and even. Okay, so I can choose an off angle if I want, but I'm not forced into that off angle. So that's it. Basically, once you create that, you've created your chain links. Um, you can go ahead and uh, select both of those, and then uh, Control D, and then move that ahead. I'll just do this by eye. So I'll just basically get it lined up like that. And then to make them continue to go down the line, I'm just going to press Shift D, and that just uh, duplicates with Transform. And I can make this now as long as I wanted it to be, just using that command. And incidentally, those are available under Edit. And that we use duplicate, control D, and then we use duplicate with transform shift D after I'd already created um, the duplicate of the, the next two links. All right, so that's it. That's how to make a, a, a chain link um, or a link of chain, a length of chain. Um, all right, so at any rate, uh, the last thing that uh, you should do on this stuff is name your objects. So I'm just going to select everything, and instead of naming them all individually, uh, up here, uh, this is actually a, um, a, a GUI element. It's really poorly implemented, but if you click and hold on that, you can see that there are other things available here. So I'm going to switch this to rename, and then I'm just going to name this um, chain link. And this will um, rename them in the order that they are selected. 
So the order of selection is important in this particular thing. So if you want this to be number one, then that needs to be the first selected. And then you can go down the line um, selecting each one. Um, if you click and drag, sometimes you get somewhat of a random selection order. So just sort of be aware of that. This is going to re rename them in the order that you have selected them here. All right, so I'll just rename this um, link. And so they automatically get the number um, appended to them. So there you go. So all renamed and ready to go.